welcome back to my channel i realize you're probably like moving around a lot and i apologize it's because this was the only kind of quiet place i could find to film this video um so you are like bouncing on my bed so every time i move it kind of like wobbles look you ready oh we're moving <laughs> okay so yeah i apologize for that but this is literally the only quiet space i could find um okay so let's start with this video is going to be my five week pregnancy update video still can't believe i'm saying that this is in fact baby number eight number eight so if you are new to our channel then i will tell you that my name is amanda hi and i am a mummy to seven children seven i have two boys and five girls my eldest is 14 and my youngest is coming up 11 months now crazy crazy that 11 months kind of went past so quickly um i'm also married to kevin and i have been married to kevin for almost 15 years 15 years next month which is me um and we have been together for 19 years which is a long time i actually met him when i was 15 and we were married by the time I was eight, eight, no, 19. We had our first son when I was 18. So I was a teen mum. Yeah, and it's just kind of progressed from there. We didn't anticipate having so many children, but we're happy as ever. And yes, you know, we can't wait to meet this little one as well. We call it Sprout at the moment because we don't know if it's a he or she, obviously, because it's like really early. Um, so we're calling it Sprout. So if you hear me referring to it as sprout then that's what it is so if you are new here welcome to our channel and uh, if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you don't give it a thumbs down if you really like it definitely hit the subscribe button and join our youtube family okay so I'm trying not to wobble too much i have my notes in front of me they're not really notes they're kind of like scruffy little sentences for me to talk about i very nearly didn't make this video i was supposed to make it yesterday um not make it film it i was supposed to make it uh, no oh what is wrong with me i was supposed to film this video yesterday however i was really not feeling very well so i didn't um and then i very 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 nearly didn't film it today um because i was feeling really tired but we'll get to that um but i thought you know what let's just put our makeup on let's make ourselves feel better i did very minim minimalistic oh, this happens every time i'm pregnant can't get my words out i have got very minimalistic makeup that i have applied just to do this video for you it did it has made me feel better it's made me feel fresher i did a whole cleanse tone and moisturize and everything before i did it and then i put my makeup on so i feel so much better now um however i'm still setting like my night shirt it's not a night shirt i don't sleep in it it's like i like wear it around the house all the time it's like so old but anyway moving on i have these so let's have a look where we're going okay so the first thing on my list to talk about is how and when I told my husband. Okay, so I told my husband the same day as you saw the test. Well, no, it wasn't the same day because you you won't be seeing these videos for a little while yet because um, I want to document everything before we said anything to anybody. Nobody kind of knows. But so when I did the first test, I went and told my husband who was overjoyed. We did not film it because it's like a personal thing isn't it it's a personal thing a personal moment where you tell you your spouse that you're gonna have a baby and he really he was really excited he still is really excited he keeps smiling the first that when I told him he was walking around like a Cheshire cat all day all day he just did not stop smiling he was so overjoyed it was ridiculous absolutely ridiculous the way he was it was funny but he was so excited and because he was excited I was excited um so yeah he's really really happy i didn't do anything special i just told him you know well actually <laughs> we were we were moving bedrooms around upstairs trying to make space for everything that was going on because we have got seven children we've got a five bedroom house and we've got seven children so we were trying to make the very most of the space upstairs this bedroom where i am now used to be my office but it's not working with us being downstairs in our office 
my office what was my office so we're gonna move back upstairs and this will be my office again it's like musical rooms um so when i said to him we have to work out how to fit so many people in this house and he's going yeah we've got nine people to fit in how are we going to do it? i said okay then you know we'll have two this room two this room three this room three that room um because we've got four bedrooms upstairs and he went two four seven that's ten why is the ten why do we have to fit ten people in and it didn't click for a little while i'm like oh my god okay I thought, I'm just going to have to blurt it out in a minute. Um, and he went, oh, my phone's vibrating. Where's my phone? It's in here somewhere. Don't worry about that. Um, and he went, 10. Why have we got to fit 10 in? And I said, yeah, three this room, three that room, two that room, two that room. We can, we can do that. And he went, that's 10. And he went, oh, that's 10. That's 10. And he did this weird face. And he's going, that's 10. You could have been you to tell me. I said, yeah. And he goes, yeah. And he's, he's sitting there like this doing all this like they still work they still work the proper man thing to do you know like my boys work oh yeah my boys work all that rubbish I'm like dude really okay i think we've worked out they work this is number eight i think we know they work but yeah he was really excited it was really funny i've got a really itchy nose well i'm gonna get a surprise oh Itchy nose, mean, itchy nose means you're going to get a surprise. Um, so yeah, he was really excited and he's still really excited. And he's doing that whole protective husband thing where he won't let me do anything. It's really annoying, but I love him for it anyway. Okay, so uh, we told the children as well. Um, we literally, I did the whole bedroom scenario thing with the children. And it took them a minute to twig what was going on. My eldest twig first. He... He sat next to me and we were doing like a family meeting because we often have family meetings. And um, I kept repeating myself over and over, three in that bedroom, three in that bedroom, two in that bedroom, two in that bedroom. And he's going, yeah, 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 we'll do all this. And they're all sitting there, yes, we'll, we'll, oh, we could put this here and we put that there and we were all deciding together. And then my, my uh, eldest, my 14 year old Ethan, he said to me, wait, that's 10. He looked at me and he went, oh. literally, just like his father. He is his father's double. He, he did exactly the same thing. Obviously not about the men working, but, you know, he did the same thing, like, oh. and he gave me a huge cuddle. And everybody else is looking at him, like, why is he giving mum a cuddle? Why is he acting weird? And then um, I repeated myself and I said, you still don't get it, do you? None of you get it. Apart from Ethan, I said, I said to Kev, I said to Kev, my husband, oh, let me adjust myself because I'm really not comfortable. Um, I said to him, oh, we nearly went down then. What's going on here? Right, let's, that's better. Stay, we're on the wonk, aren't we? There we go, are we on the wonk? There we go. Um, and I said to, I said to my other son, count them, Dylan. Two, two, three, three. He said, yeah, that's ten. I said, right, okay, now count how many people are in the room. And he went, oh. <laughs> it was so funny. It was so funny. Um, he He's off the moon. He's really excited that we're going to have another baby. He is, he really is. However, he is desperate for a boy. He just said, it has to be a boy. I don't care that you're pregnant, mum. I really love that you're having another baby. We're going to have another, you know, brother or sister. But I've really, please, can you make it a boy? Please make it a boy, please. If you don't make it a boy, I'm going to go and live in the shed. <laughs> Which was really funny. And I, I just bless him. I said to him, you know, we can't put these things on order. You can't just say, I want a boy. So give me a boy. It's not going to work like that. We get what we're given. It's either going to be a boy or a girl. It's a 50-50 chance. However you know after five girls there's a really good chance it could be another girl but we'll wait and see um so yeah and my other children were like jumping up and down my four-year-old and six-year-old keep cuddling my belly and talking to my belly so they were over the moon so all of my children know my husband knows but nobody else knows yet we haven't quite worked out when we're going to tell everybody um we haven't really thought that one through yet there's so much going on at the moment um okay so my next thing to talk about was being pregnant in lockdown 
So, like I said in my testing videos, we weren't actively trying to have a baby. We just weren't preventing. We just we weren't being careful as such. <laughs> you know, because it's not often we find time together anyway. Um, so it was just kind of a, if it happens, it happens kind of thing. I've got to admit, I didn't expect it to happen, given the fact that we weren't really trying, because we're older now, you know, I'm I'm 33 now, and I was expecting like a little bit of a, you know, time before anything did happen. However, we have been absolutely blessed, and we're extremely fertile. It would seem that my husband's fertile, that's really fertile and so am I. So we've been really, really blessed with that because uh, I know there's lots and lots of people that do struggle with that. So it makes me feel very, very lucky um, to have that. And I wish that I could pass that good luck onto those that are struggling and really, really do want it. And I keep all of my giblets crossed so that you get what you need to. Um, and you get that little bundle of joy. So, yeah, I mean, being pregnant in lockdown, it is a little bit daunting. We don't really know how everything is working with the hospitals and everything yet. I mean, they've said that scans will go ahead, um, but they will pl be planned all at once. The dates will be given all at once for each scan throughout the pregnancy. And we will have to attend by ourselves. We cannot take our partner in, which is going to be really difficult because Kevin hasn't missed any of our scans and my anxiety doesn't do well in hospitals especially when there are germs like the virus um i don't do very well with all with all of that um <laughs> i have a bit of a thing about hand sanitizers and not touching door handles and things like that because it's just it's something that's always kind of stuck with me um and given the fact that now everybody wants hand sanitizer there isn't any left to spare but I do have a couple of little bottles that I will carry with me anyway but hopefully it'll just kind of you know it'll be really quiet and I can just kind of slip in get my scan done and slip back out again but we don't have to worry about that for another how many weeks six seven eight maybe weeks something like that it won't be till the end of May anyway um so yeah He's not allowed at the scans. Antenatal appointments are apparently done over the phone, but as for blood tests and everything like that, I'm not really sure how that works yet. I'm sure I'll find out when I speak to my midwife um, directly, so we'll get to that. Um, as for things like giving birth, that's a long way off. I'm hoping that there'll be some kind of calm scenario where, you know, the lockdown ends and the coronavirus just magically disappears and everybody is safe and well and you know we can get back to what we always thought was normality you know this could be our new normal we don't know but i'm hoping that this this horrible virus buggers off and leaves everybody alone because it has been absolutely awful even watching the news it's scary it's heartbreaking and what really 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 grates on me is that all of these beautiful beautiful people that have succumbed to this virus are just numbers on a screen and that really 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 gets on my nerves because they are not numbers they are people i know they have to do data i know they have to do all their calculations and everything that they need to do but these people are people not numbers they are lives they had feelings they had family they had emotion they had you know stuff going on they were scared you know so that really just grates on me but yeah so i mean been pregnant in a lockdown I've obviously never done it nobody has um apart from millions of years ago not millions of years ago it wasn't that far but you know what I mean um so exercise and things like that we're just gonna have to do you know I'll do what I do do what I I'll do what I have to do at home I'll do my exercise I'll eat healthily um take my uh supplements that I need and all of that so I'll be doing all of that it won't affect any of that it's just obviously the appointments the scans and obviously the birth when that comes around but we will deal with that and cross those bridges as we come to it um okay so moving on to the good stuff symptoms now symptoms 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 I don't normally get symptoms before I do a test but what really really pushed me to doing a test and I've got to admit 85% uh, of me was like 
I'm pretty sure I'm pregnant. I know my body by now. But then the other 15% of me was like, oh, really? You know? So basically, before I tested, I was really, really tired. Like, really tired. Not just a little bit tired. Like, I was going to bed at, like... I'd go and sit on the bed at about half past five. And come seven o'clock, I was out. Like, out. And my husband, the next day, would be like, Oh, this happened last night. Oh, sorry, I missed it. I didn't even get to put the kids to bed. You put the kids to bed by yourself. I'm so grateful. Thank you. But I was so tired. Um, and that's kind of continued as well. But I think I mentioned this in one... In one my testing did I mention this I don't know um basically my husband was cooking a tandoori chicken and we wanted to try it I walked into the kitchen smelt it walked straight back out again my face there was just no color in my face I felt really not okay and I was like oh my god I can't even be near it later on when he he brought it through I ate it fine but the smell in the kitchen when it was cooking, couldn't bear it. Then there was another instance where I was having dinner. And after my dinner, I felt a bit queasy. I felt a bit off. And I thought, okay, maybe, maybe it was just something that didn't agree with me. So I just sat quietly. And then my son brought out the antibacterial wipes. Now, every pregnancy I've had, I've never been able to stomach these antibacterial wipes the smell of them I love it when I'm not pregnant the smell is beautiful it's very fresh very clean but when I'm pregnant it's like a lemon scented I can't bear it and he brought them out and he started wiping down the dining tables because they all help after dinner they all we all have they all have their jobs after dinner to help clean up which we've always done and he was wiping down the dining tables and I felt absolutely ill. I had to, I went into the bathroom, couldn't get away from the smell. I went into the other room, couldn't get away from the smell. So I literally had to go and sit outside in my coat, huddled up in the garden, because it was cold at this point, just to get away from the smell, because I couldn't bear it. And then I was like, oh, okay, so that's like a massive, big pointer that I could possibly be pregnant at this time. So yeah, that's continued. And the smell aversions have continued. I can't bear anything that's being cooked. My husband's doing the majority of the cooking because I just can't bear it. Um, that's kind of been my biggest thing. And then yesterday, yesterday, um, I was really sick. And I don't normally, I mean, I get sick, but not violently physically sick. But yesterday, it, I couldn't stop it. I just couldn't stop it. And like I said, I was supposed to film this video yesterday, but I was just so ill at that point. I just felt absolutely rotten. Basically, I smelled a smell that wasn't very pleasant <laughs> and we thought it was hilarious. So my husband had been to the bathroom and ladies, if you are married, you know what that's like. When they've been to the bathroom, it's like something died. It is horrific. It is absolutely horrific. And... My daughter had gone into the bathroom after my husband and she said, Mommy, I need your help. So I went in to help her. It hit me like a sledgehammer. It did. I'm standing there and I'm trying, I'm smiling and I'm trying to help her. And I said to her, you know, she's trying to get the hand soap onto her hands. And I was helping her and I, I said to her, I'm really, really sorry, but Mommy's, Mommy's got to leave you in here by yourself. I've got to go. I've got to go. Made it through, right through the hallway got to my bedroom and that was it I had to literally do a nose dive into my ensuite and I was ill and it passed quickly afterwards I felt so much better I did I felt so much better afterwards um walked back through I went back through into the <laughs> I went back through and my daughter said mommy I'm gonna close the door to that bathroom so you don't get sick again. And oh, I couldn't stop laughing. I thought it was so funny. Then everybody was taking the mick out of, out of dad because he just, he literally stunk the whole house out. <laughs> it was funny. It was just the way my daughter said, mommy, I'm gonna close this door. And she was so serious. And just closing the door, she's saying it. She said, I'm gonna close this door so you don't get sick again. It was just, it was so funny. 
um but yeah then my husband started cooking again and then I just didn't feel well so I just kind of lay on my bed and that was the end of the day for me um so yeah I've had a lot of symptoms that I kind of just kind of flew upwards um so the sickness is there it's not constant um it isn't constant at all I had a little bit of dyscosia which is that horrible metallic rancid rotten taste in your mouth I had a little bit of that but that seems to have gone I'm not holding on to me hat though because it's normally around six weeks that that comes back with a vengeance so we'll see how that goes I'm, I'm hoping that doesn't go <coughs> <coughs> excuse me I'm hoping 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 that doesn't come because that is awful I hate the dyscosia um and how tired I've been just really, really, really tired, really tired. So it's hit and miss really because I don't get sick when I'm pregnant with boys. I get sick when I'm pregnant with girls. So I've had sickness, so it could be a girl, but I usually get incredibly tired when I'm pregnant with a boy. 50-50, so don't know, Come, don't know yet. I'm, well, I'm saying I don't know. Everybody else is like, oh boy, 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 it's gotta be a boy, it's gotta be a boy. I'm pretty sure it's another girl. I'm pretty sure, but it's 50-50. You know, based on symptoms, it's 50-50. But I kind of just feel like it's a girl. Only time will tell. Um, oh, there as well. Yeah, that's another symptom I've had. All these teeth across here have become really sensitive. Now, if you've been with me for a while you may have seen my other pregnancy videos with my other pregnancies where um i have had problems with my teeth i actually had to have this one here removed this is Rhonda. this is Rhonda. i had to have removed um i could go and get a false one put in there i'm not going to because i'm absolutely petrified of the dentist um that was with who was that with that was with Darcy. Was it Darcy? I was actually eating a yogurt. You know those yogurts with the corner bits on? You get the tiny little balls in them, the little balls of like biscuits and that. I was eating one of those and I just heard this almighty crunch and my tooth was gone. It was just gone. I was like, oh, who breaks their teeth on a yogurt? Who does that? So yeah. That one had to be removed and then with harper i actually had to go in and have um a horrendous emergency dental surgery um i woke up i woke up one day and i think this i've actually got some of this documented on video i woke up and all around here was swollen um i'm hurt i work out i can't remember which side was it this side it was all this was swollen but all of this i had this big lump that was here um and I kind of knew there was something going on. The pain was immense and I had a bit of a lump there. And I was like, okay, that'll, that'll go away. It's fine. I'm not going to the dentist. It'll be fine. It's some antibiotics. It'll go away. Um, however, <laughs> it didn't. My face then ballooned. Um, I woke up in the morning. It ballooned and it was massive and I couldn't breathe. And I kind of jumped up and I said to my husband, I can't breathe. I cannot breathe. It's all closing. All my throat and everything was closing up. Um, it then became an emergency. We had to call 999, well, my husband did. Um, and we went via ambulance. And by the time I got to the hospital, it was huge, absolutely huge. Um, and they said to me, oh, you're, you're reacting to the infection. We need to admit you. We need to get you into surgery. However, the surgeon that I needed wasn't there until the next morning. So I had to spend the night on intravenous antibiotics. I had fluids. I had um, painkillers, all kind of going through tubes in my hands. I felt like a pincushion. It was absolutely awful. And just to top it off, when they tried to take me down to surgery... I had the biggest anxiety attack ever. I was crying. I was sobbing. It was awful. Um, and they had to remove teeth along here. Well, they, they removed one from here, but it feels like they like removed all of it because it just feels really big, the gap. Um, and they did something up here as well. And they said that I was very lucky. If I had left it another day, 
I could have died um, because the infection was quite immense. Um, nobody ever mentioned whether it was sepsis or anything like that, so I don't know for definite if that's what it was, but when I was lying in the recovery room, um, the surgeon that I had was sat by my bed with a little clipboard and said, if you had have left this, you could have lost your life. If you had left it another day, you would have, you would have lost your life. And I remember just looking at her and thinking it was funny for some reason, because not funny as in, this is hilarious, like funny as in nervous, um, because I was, I think I was mad at myself that I'd let it get that far. But anyway, I've had my whole dental surgery. That was all caused by my pregnancy. My pregnancy had weakened all my teeth, as it does, but I'd kind of taken it to the extreme. Um, so I'd lost these teeth, uh, this tooth in my last one and something up here. Um, and I lost this one and the one before. So with this time around, it's feeling really sensitive. It's not painful. It's just like across here is feeling really sensitive to cold. So I'm going to have to keep a real close eye on that. Obviously, I'm taking supplements that include calcium and things like that. So um, hopefully that'll help it. Two seconds. Oh, Kevin's just brought me lunch. I actually made this the other day. It's already potted up, but he brought it through for me. It's a quinoa sun and sun-dried tomato. No, let me get this right. Quinoa, curly kale, sun-dried tomato with red onion, a little bit of lemon juice, a little bit of oil. It's like a little salad. And he's added in, oh, look, he's added in some chicken and some of these little breads. He said they're really nice. They, what are they, garlic and coriander? Oh, he's brought that in for me. My darling have that in a minute bless him um yeah so i'm taking supplements to control like that hopefully fingers crossed i'm just gonna like avoid anything that's yogurt based with biscuit in it so i don't break any tea and if i get any pain i'm just gonna have to jump on it as much as i'm absolutely petrified of a dentist i'll just have to do it otherwise i'm gonna end up with no teeth whatsoever and i'm gonna have to put my dentures in so you know, no offence to anybody that wears dentures, but I just personally don't want them because it makes me feel a bit funny. When I was little, my granddad used to pop his teeth out and he thought it was hilarious. However, it always made me feel a little bit sick because it just, I feel funny. Even when my children's teeth fall out and they're like, oh, mommy, the tooth fairy, look. And I'm, no, I can't deal with it. Something about it makes me feel funny. Um, So yeah, I mean, that's my symptoms <laughs> of like, waffled on for ages oh my god we've already done 28 minutes <gasps> okay so i'm gonna have to cut this down a bit um yeah oh and peeing like every two seconds i've got to run to the bathroom every two seconds which is standard standard early pregnancy symptoms um am i cutting any food out am i doing a diet yeah i mean i'm eating healthily however with the nausea and like the sickness i feel like we're on the wrong again um with oh my kids are fighting shouting each other um yeah i'm just trying to eat as healthy as i can like instead of going for like deep fried chicken i'll go for like a nice baked or grilled piece of chicken you know it's kind of swapping things out making sure that i'm staying healthy um i'm not really cutting anything out uh, uh, anything out apart from like you know your standard alcohol you can't drink alcohol when you're pregnant um i know people some people do and they say that you can i prefer not to um <clears throat> Things like, I don't know, brie and pate, which I love, and smoked salmon, kind of hit and miss. Some people do have it, some people don't. I choose not to because obviously you can catch um, the bacteria, listeria from there, so I try not to. Is it listeria? I don't know. Anyway, that something from there. Um... Yeah, so that's basically what I'm cutting out and diet. I'm just trying to stay healthy and drink lots, drink, drink, drink lots of water. Hydration is key. Um, Cravings, literally anything bland. Anything bland and salty. <laughs> I can't... <laughs> okay. I can't keep a straight face when saying this because every time I say it, my husband makes some kind of really crude joke and it's just like dude anyway things like see i'm saying eat healthily and don't have anything deep fried but these are um 
like chips or fries as you would call them in other places um just lots of salt and vinegar on chips it's kind of all i've been to stomach at the moment i mean my husband's brought this lovely meal for me i made it yesterday hoping that i can eat it um but yeah the only thing that i've been able to stomach and keep in its rightful place is chips with lots of salt and vinegar so yeah not really a craving just kind of what i can stomach um oh mushrooms i haven't eaten mushrooms since i was like ever when i was a little girl wouldn't go near them and that's followed on right through my whole life will not touch a mushroom cannot stand mushrooms can't stand the smell can't stand the texture anything can't just can't 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 and then my husband started cooking them the other day and i was like oh can i have some of them and he just stood there looking at me like what you want mushrooms you've never eaten mushrooms why do you want mushrooms and I, lit, I literally did. I stood and ate a bowl of mushrooms, which was really strange. And my mind was telling me that they were disgusting and horrible and get them out of my mouth. But there was something else telling me, God, these are lo lovely. I want them and I'm going to eat them and I'm going to eat them all now. So that was a bit weird. It was weird. I've never, ever, ever eaten mushrooms. It's just weird. Um... Thoughts on gender, we've already covered that. I think it's a girl. Symptoms, mm, symptoms kind of point out, it could be either. Um, everybody else wants it to be a, a boy and they think it's a boy. I do think it's a girl. I do think it's a girl. Um, I'm not gonna do a bump shop because I don't feel like there's a bump to look at at the minute. It's just bloat and a little bit of wobble. Actually, it's a lot of wobble, but you know. Um, my weight, I'm going to keep a check on my weight. I need to weigh myself. I keep going to weigh myself and then get tied up doing something else. Obviously, I am already around about 70. Yeah, let's just go with 80 pounds overweight. So I need to keep a check on that. I obviously wanted to lose weight before I fell pregnant, but things had a different idea. And now I'm pregnant and so I need to keep a check on it. Obviously, losing weight through pregnancy is not ideal, um, but... Changing habits, you know, changing my eating habit, my habits, habits, um, I could possibly drop some weight, which obviously I was talking to my doctor about the other day as well. Um, if I change my eating habits and I'm still, you know, getting my three meals and my two snacks or three snacks, depending on how I'm feeling that day, um, and it's all healthy and I'm staying in a good calorie range and I'm, you know, getting lots of exercise, as long as I'm staying fit and healthy, and I, I drop weight, that's fine. But if I start where, like, I'm just not eating and then drop weight, that's not good. So, you know, changing eating habits, I may drop a few pounds, which would be great as long as baby is getting what baby needs because that is the most important thing ever. Okay, so now that I've babbled on, I'm really going to have to edit this video because we're literally over, over 30 minutes. Um, I love you all. We're five weeks pregnant. <laughs> You're gonna believe it. Oh, baby is the size of a sesame seed. I didn't even say that. Baby is the size of ses 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 sesame seed. And I think at the end of this week, it has a two chambered heart, or it already has a two chambered heart that's beating. I have to check. So, okay, I'm gonna stop now. I'm talking so much. I'm gonna end this one here. I love you so much. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.